saja ini. Baru saja ini mai isi. Kenapa? Ay, kami pijat. Jenis, jenis. Ini gordito. Dia lupa. Kira. secure and so now the day can begin so finally the city is back open today and today it's time to tour Comuna Trece are you excited for Comuna Trece? New friend? So while me and Echo are waiting for the tour guides uh, to find all the groups and get started, I'll give you guys a little bit of backstory on Comuna Trece. So back uh, in the 80s and 90s, I believe, uh, when Colombia itself was one of the most dangerous countries, um, Comuna Trece specifically was one of the most dangerous, if not the most dangerous neighborhood in Medellin and uh, a lot of it has to do with Pablo Escobar and his war um, against the Colombian government at the time because they were uh, tr trying to work together with the United States to extradite uh, narco traffickers and Pablo Escobar didn't want that. So nowadays uh, it's a lot safer and things have changed a lot and uh, one of the ways they like to demonstrate this is by uh, showing a lot of artwork throughout Comuna Trece. So um, there's a lot of spray paint on the walls uh, and a lot of local and uh, professional spray paint artists that are famous throughout Colombia. And now um, it's a lot more beautiful and it kind of exemplifies the peace now that is there where there used to be a lot of violence and you live for maybe one week or one year when you come back for the people live in the house by the way the tour group i went with is called zippy and you can find it online and it's free and there's an optional tip at the end we kind of lucked out because the only english speaking group happened to just have only one other guy so there was just me echo and one other guy so we got a lot of individual attention the other thing that was really cool is our guide actually lives at the very top of the mountain in Comuna Trece. So you'll see later in the video, uh, we finish off the tour right at her house. And so obviously she knows everything from firsthand experience.
So on the way up towards the hill, she was explaining a lot of the backstory to us. And so one of the things is how the Comunas came to be in the first place. And um, it's basically like unsanctioned land, like they're technically illegal settlements. And uh, they just began to build there and build and build on top of each other, one after the other. And then, yeah, so basically it had used to be uh, kind of a stronghold for gangs, guerrillas, paramilitaries, uh, and mostly the narco-trafficking. And uh, eventually in early 2000, I think it was 2002, the current president, Alvaro Uribe, uh, launched an operation called Orion, which was basically a raid to kind of clean out the area. And uh, there's actually a lot of songs, even current day songs that are written about this uh, in Colombian culture. And basically the people that live there kind of suffered obviously because they were caught in the crossfire. Um, and I'm pretty sure it lasted uh, at least a few weeks, but in the end, finally, they kind of cleaned out the area. And after that, um, luckily it kind of changed the whole mentality around the area. Um, everyone felt like a little bit safer, the people living there, and the kids were able to kind of go outside and play again. Um, but one thing that was still a problem was kind of access, because you can see the homes are built up the side of a hill. So uh, getting up and down, especially every day regularly to get to and from work or something like that was really difficult. And so the government actually uh, installed these escalators called escaleras in Spanish. Uh, and you'll see later on in the video and they've actually become uh, pretty famous and one of the main kind of tourist attractions also. finally reached the very top of the Kamuna. Uh, the one thing I wasn't quite prepared for was the fact that when the tour finishes, they leave you at the very top. So you go all the way in from the bottom, all the way to the top, 
and then they leave you there and finish the tour there and those of you that know me uh, closely know that I'm not very good on directions so that was a big surprise and afterwards um, I was a little bit hungry so the tour guide recommended me a small little local restaurant that's basically just part of somebody's house that was really close to where we were and yeah basically left me like that and she basically just pointed down the mountain of uh where i had to go to leave but like i said i'm not very good at directions and she said you could stay for a bit and explore and everything get some food and everything but just make sure you leave uh before it gets dark because it's still uh even today not the safest place to be especially after dark and especially as a foreigner so uh what do you think i did uh, here you can see me eating one of the most famous uh, dishes in Colombia. It's called bandeja paisa, and it's specific to this region around Medellin. Uh, the people of that region are also called paisas. So this is probably uh, one of my favorite dishes in Colombia. It has like plantain, a piece, and then uh, rice, and then usually egg. And this, uh, I'm not even completely sure how to describe it, but it's sort of like a certain kind of sausage. And yeah, it's just a perfect uh, mix of everything and it fills you up and it's pretty healthy too. This video was filmed quite a while ago and also probably having been only just maybe a couple weeks in Colombia, my very first time, first time in any Spanish speaking country. So it's really funny now to hear my Spanish in these videos because it's so bad, <laughs> honestly, and sounds like uh, such a noob. But my Spanish is a heck of a lot better now and I can pretty much have like completely full conversation at this point. But it's funny hearing my Spanglish accent in these videos. <laughs> So needless to say, I wasn't going to leave without doing at least a little bit of exploring. Um, I figured after I finished eating, I would just go out and maybe just get like a beer before I ended up leaving. But uh, I had no clue what was in store for me and I ended up getting a beer at a stand and basically making friends with the guy that ran that stand uh, who is very similar to me in age and ended up uh, basically spending the evening there actually which uh, was completely unplanned and we ended up making other friends there and the reason I felt comfortable with him was because he owned the stand so he was there every day and as we walked around you could see everybody knew him and they respected him so it's kind of like as long as I was with him I was safe. Later on at night he ended up showing me this place that's kind of covered in uh, like luminescent paint so you wear these glasses and everything looks like neon colored kind of like under UV lights and everything and funny enough I'm actually still friends with him to this day. Shout out Felipe. But immediately when we came out of the restaurant we encountered this group of kids uh, and they were really interested in where we were from and everything and if I was vlogging and a YouTuber and it was fun trying to communicate to them uh, with their lack of English and my lack of Spanish still at the time.
Things were all crazy. <laughs> all right, guys, me and Echo will be waiting for you here next time, and we're going to keep exploring Medellin and the rest of Colombia. And eventually we're going to be going to Nepal and Thailand. <laughs>